Dr. David Tiedemeyer, who's already spoken uh, today, so I won't do much of an introduction, just say he's a former fellow, and as we know, he uh, has, does a lot of work with uh, palliative care, but today he's going to talk to us on a more humanistic uh, issue. So. I'm, I'm actually here really representing Laura Roberts. Um, she really is sorry to be unable to be with you today, and I'm, I'm literally going to read what she said. She's actually engaged in RICE, rest, ice, compression, and elevation, uh, because of her knee surgery. So there's really no one better than Laura to write these things, um, because she, when John LaPuma was the first fellow and a group of us were the second, Lantos, um, Zug, Abby Zuger, and myself, and Laura was the mainstay uh, uh, administrator for Mark and really a, a, a partner intellectually uh, over time. So I'm just going to read what she wrote. My congratulations to the audience of scholars and educators, scientists and learners, activists and friends assembled this afternoon, the 30th anniversary of the McLean Center for Clinical Medical Ethics at the University of Chicago. 30 years, what an occasion. The center is important for so many reasons. As a place for learning, a place for discovery, a place for scholarship, a place for considering, and collaborating and sharing wisdom. And I think this last session particularly showed me that it was eclectic. I mean, it really was wonderful. Um, having worked with Mark Siegler, Loro goes on to say, shoulder to shoulder as he established the center, I can say that his vision, clarity of purpose, and tenacity have been an inspiration throughout my career. And I'm sure for all of you here today. I'll fill you in on our neuroethics work at the next conference, but today I mostly wanted to tell you about the book, Clinical Medical Ethics. And could I have a copy? Could I have a copy? I think I have mine right here. This. Clinical Medical Ethics, Land work, Landmark Works of Mark Siegler, MD. This was published last year by Springer, Nature, and uh, she writes, we've given away 100 copies of the book today in the hope that it will be useful and used by the McLean community. And Mark, thank you for inscribing them for us and uh, uh, admiration and respect back to you. The book is a labor of love and it embodies a small portion of the great work to come from the McLean Center over the years. And I'm going to maybe uh, have you push some, show some slides. I found these slides to be just wonderful. And the book is meant to be a resource for teaching. And it's organized into, I'm going to have you read and look at these wonderful photos as I go. It's organized into five sections, foundational scholarship, doctor-patient relationship, education and professionalism, end-of-life care, and clinical innovation. Dozens of reprinted conceptual and empirical papers written by many people here. So please look for yourself. Many people here are in the book, along with a number of entries by beloved colleagues and she mentions a few, and I'm going to mention them. Holly Humphrey, Dan Salmacy, Peter Singer, Jordan Cohen, Ken Polanski, and Dana Levinson. And the book has these wonderful photos. Um, these are in the back of the book, and uh, she writes, documenting how old we have all gotten. Except Anna, who looks exactly the same <laughs> as 35 years ago. Anna. Now let's turn to Mark Siegler, Laura says. In my in, and I'm going to uh, stand back, so in my introductory chapter, she writes, 
In three-piece wool suits, wire-rimmed glasses, and scuffed Oxfords, Mark Siegler is not anyone's image of an innovator. With his emphasis on the doctor-patient relationship and talk of old-fashioned values in medicine, he may not sound like an innovator either, and yet innovator he is. Siegler has defined how modern clinical medicine is practiced and studied, and he has done this by reinvigorating the rigorous ethical decision-making into all of our aspects of patient care. The implications of his work are felt in every discipline of medicine, every health profession, and across society. His approach seamlessly integrates careful consideration of values, the duties of the healer, the nature of a profession, standards of care, and the state of biomedical science. In a sense, the term clinical ethics is redundant, Siegler writes in 1979, because good clinical medicine is necessarily ethical medicine. Ethics, Siegler has insisted, is not an afterthought. It's not a luxury. It's not a secondary consideration. It's essential. It's necessary. It's part of excellent clinical medicine. Through a lifetime of dedicated work at the U of C, Mark has indeed fostered innovation in clinical medicine. He's built clinical medical ethics as a field and shaped the profession of medicine and the professional lives of thousands of students of all ages over the years. Laura writes, I wanted to be able to acknowledge these contributions on the occasion of the 30th anniversary of the McLean Center. So please, let me thank you for this time. And she writes, I offer my deepest thanks to the McLean family whose generosity has allowed the center to flourish over decades. It's a tremendous legacy. And Mark and Anna, thank you for your privilege of being a part of your professional family life. These are among the greatest gifts of my life. Thank you from Laura and from all of us. I'm, I'll do this. I'm, I'm stunned by, by Laura's note. And, um, I, I hope many of you have received the book today. Um, it's a gift from Laura. Um, she, um, she sent she sent a hundred copies to be distributed today at the conference. Um, uh, th thank you all so much for coming today, and um, look forward to this evening. Bye bye, and thank Lainey for the, for running this last panel, and David. Thanks.